All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome again to the Winning Digital Customers Show. Today, we are going to talk about how to have a party on Zoom. And I am ready for a party. Now, of course, when I say Zoom, it doesn't have to be Zoom. It could be whatever you use at your company, Teams, GoToMeeting, or whatever other platform. Now, why would we want to do that? Well, as we all know, these days, so many people are working from home. So many people are remote and distributed. And, you know, parties, not in addition to just being something that's fun to do, can really play an important role in making sure that your team really gets to know each other, really causing team bonding. You know, this is a show about winning digital customers. You might wonder, what does having a party on Zoom have to do with winning digital customers? Well, you know, I think the most important factor in the success of your business really in the end is going to be how well your team is aligned, how well they work together, how committed they are to a common goal. And there's a lot of things that create that, but certainly one of them is that sense of you know camaraderie amongst the team. And well, parties are a classic way we do that. That's why every year companies spend so much money in a normal year, having holiday Christmas parties, team outings, excursions, go bowling, go, go a company picnic. That's the function that these things play. They're, they really serve an actual business purpose. And I'm going to actually take this hat off because it keeps falling off my head. But hopefully the point is made. And I'm going to talk about this hat in a moment as well. Um, so, uh, so, so one of the things we lose when all our folks are working from home is it becomes a lot less practical to think about how do we have a party? How do we have a holiday party? How do we have a spring party or whatever it may be? And frankly, it's not even just a coronavirus issue because our teams are increasingly so distributed that if you only have parties with the folks that work in New York or only have parties with the folks that work in LA or Dubai or wherever, uh, well, you know, then you're, you're isolating, you're, you're losing the opportunity to have that kind of cross uh, camaraderie between people who may not be in the same location. Now, I'm not here to suggest to you that parties on Zoom can be every bit as good <laughs> as the ones that you do in person. Look, I, I'm not going to try to argue that. But what I will suggest to you is that you can have a great and fun party experience on conferencing platforms and that doing so is very worthwhile when you don't have a practical way to get your entire team together in person. So we've done it a number of times with my company. We've done it actually in several contexts. We've done it with the team members of our company and we had a great time. We also do a lot of workshops. And so those are not really parties, but we try to also incorporate when we do workshops, business, you know, strategy planning workshops, things like that, elements to make them fun. And so some of the elements I'm going to show you here not only apply if you're just going to have a party, but there are also things that you can apply if you're, let's say, doing a day-long session on Zoom and you're trying to figure out how do I break it up? How do I make it interesting? And how do I make sure that one part of what comes out of that is some sense of that camaraderie that you get from a party and you can sprinkle some of these techniques in as well? So um, let's talk about, I'm going to talk today about eight specific tactics that you can use to help uh, create a party on Zoom. So let's dive in. So the first I want to talk about is just declare it a party. You know, in order to have a party, someone has to say it's a party. It's about not only scheduling the party, but having full commitment to the fact that we are going to have a party. Not a, well, guys, we're going to try to have a party. We're going to do a holiday get together. It won't be the same. No. Full commitment. Guys, you know, 8 p.m. on Thursday night or whatever it is, we're all going to go online for 90 minutes and we are going to party. And people may be wondering how the heck are we going to do that? But show them your full commitment. Send out a fun invitation and declare that it will be a party. Now, now that you've declared it, how are you going to fulfill that? Next thing. But you know what? Regarding declaring it a party, let me just say, what makes something a party? It's up here, right? It's the mindset that people have when they show up. If people feel they're showing up to a meeting, it's a meeting. If people feel like they're showing up to a party, they're going to put their mental party hat on and they're going to behave in a different way. And that's how we, that's the number one way we create a party. I'm going to, don't worry, I'm going to give you some more specifics. So starting with that declaration of the party, that's the beginning of it. You want people to show up at the first moment of that party and feel like, wow. I'm really in a party, not like a normal, boring Zoom meeting. So number two, send a party box. What's a party box? Well, it's a box, you know, that you send by FedEx or UPS or something like that. Send something to participants in advance that gives them some tools that they're going to use in the party. Now, what do I mean by tools? Well, I should have waved these at the beginning. I like to send these, for example. Uh, you can get these on Amazon for uh, for cheap, like I forget, you know, bag of 12 for eight bucks or something like that. And, um, you know, someone gets a box in the mail with a hat like this, something like this, right? 
and uh, you know, and some things like this, and maybe some snacks. And all of a sudden, they think, "Oh, geez, this is going to be a party." And I'm going to show you some games that we play at the parties. And sometimes you can also include some tools, some things they're going to use in the games. Like this is something we like to send when we do a um, a workshop. We'll send out these discs. These are just foam core discs that we make, and uh, they say things on them like "Awesome," "Great idea," "Love it," or "I have a question," things like that. And um, and stuff stuff like this, which when the person gets it. Their initial reaction is probably going to be like, what are we going to do with all this stuff? But you know what? It telegraphs something too. It telegraphs that this is going to be different because normally when you have a meeting, you, you don't get a party box in advance, right? And also, of course, these are things that people can use. I love, well, here's what I find. I find that people figure out what to do with these and that if we declare a party, I find little handles here. If we declare a party and I send these to people and I say nothing more, I just send them to these things that people show up to the party. And I, by the way, if I include a party hat, if I include some th silly things like this, that people show up to that party with this stuff in hand. And that when people join in, they're doing this, right? They're, they're creating fun. Uh, uh, even just, uh, you know, in the party, um, uh, they're, they're, they're just having a good time. Right. And they're using these things to, to enter the party ready for fun. So these are very valuable, uh, things to, uh, to send out the party box sets the precedent. By the way, another thing that you could include in a party box is if there's any specific activities you're going to do. For example, uh, you might do a craft activity at a party, right? It's good to have parties that have both unstructured components and structured components. Most parties are like that. You know, you ever go to a party where, you know, it's a cocktail hour, which is fairly unstructured, and then everyone's going to sit down at dinner at their assigned seats, and then someone's going to get up and speak or, you know, that sort of thing. So, so you have, again, an unstructured portion, and a structured portion. That's very normal. So you want to Think about that, and you're going to want to be thinking about what are you going to want to do for the more structured portion of your Zoom party. I'm going to give you some specific games a little later in the live cast, but I also, uh, you know, you may be sending some materials if everyone's going to cook something together or everyone's going to, uh, you know, have something they're going to paint together. You can send that kind of material in the party box. Okay. The next thing is party attire. So that kind of connects to the party box because some of what you send people in the party box can be stuff like party attire, but you also want to encourage people, wear your party attire, wear your craziest outfit, wear your craziest shirt, come in a funny hat, give people permission. You know, people love to party, but in a business environment, sometimes they're also hesitant to know how far they can go. So you as the creator of this party, you need to let people know how far they're being asked to go. Give them specific instructions, like wear your wackiest shirt. And then, you know, you'll be surprised how your chief financial officer will show up in a disco shirt, right? Uh, it happens all the time. People need permission to let their true selves out. And you, by giving them permission as the creator of that party, create more fun for them. Uh, you know, another form of party attire, and I'm going to see if I can demonstrate this to you real, real quickly, is to use uh, a tool that allows you to augment your, your video, right? So I'm using a tool right now called Snap Camera, which actually comes from the people who make, uh, who make Snapchat. But um, there's all kinds of um, like here, look, I'm a banana. Can you believe it? Howard the banana, right? So that's just a software that I installed on my computer that takes my um, that takes my video signal and does crazy things to it, right? It can be something subtle like just uh, adding a mustache and glasses, right? And so imagine everyone shows up. Uh, imagine everyone shows up to your party, uh, and here I am as a donut, right? So uh, this is easy, fun stuff to do. I hope I can remember how to turn this thing off. I don't think I want to go through the rest of it. Well, maybe I should. Should I keep the donut head for the rest of the live cast? I don't know. Oh, what's this one? This one looks good. Um, oh, boy. This is, ah, hello. Too scary. Too scary. Okay. So um, maybe I can find something more subtle that I can keep for the rest of the live cast. Uh, oh, boy. Oh, no. Now I need to dye it. Okay, that's no good. Uh, oh, no. All right. So I'm done playing. I'm going to stop. But, um, mm hmm Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do the rest of the live cast like this. I think this will. But imagine everyone puts a crazy, a crazy thing like this on, and now they're interacting. Now they're chatting. I mean, how can you not have fun, right? So um, that is my suggestion. Again, check out Snap Camera, or there's actually a whole bunch of these. Zoom now has a number of similar types. Well, actually, not quite this crazy, but Zoom has built into it. It's kind of buried in the menus, a place where you can put like a little angel uh, a halo on your head, or you can put funny glasses and a mustache or uh, something like that. And you know, it's a funny thing that I've forgotten. How do I actually, uh... <laughs> now I'm trapped. I can't get out. Uh, how do I turn this off? I've forgotten. 
how to actually, I think I, I just clicked and uh, help, help, help me. Ah, uh, here, you know what? I'm just gonna switch back to my regular camera. Ah, <laughs> uh, um, there we go. So now I'm back, regular Howard. Okay, so that can be part of your party attire too, right? And of course, you probably wanna send an email out in advance saying everyone install Snap Camera. We did that um, when we did our holiday party for my company. Very easy, it takes two seconds. Tell everyone to install it. And you know what? People figure it out. It's not, it's easy to use and they're going to have a lot of fun. Um, okay. So that's party attire. The next thing is BYOB, right? And the B stands for the usual booze, right? I got my, I got my beer here. Now it's only 10 o'clock in the morning. So I don't think I'm going to actually uncork this beer at the moment, but um, encourage now, obviously if there are people for whom alcohol is not the right thing for them for religious or other reasons, naturally you don't want to create so much pressure in a corporate environment that people feel like they can't participate if they're not drinking. But let's face it, for most, and obviously if you deal with people who are under the age of 21, I'm certainly not suggesting you should encourage any illegal activity. But putting all of those legal disclaimers aside, now that my lawyer's happy, there's no question that alcohol in the United States anyway tends to be part of the party environment. So you want to give people permission again. You want to let them know, hey, it's a party, BYOB. And one of the things I do, I, I do a weekly uh, a networking group myself uh, that I run that we do cocktails and obviously it's on Zoom. So, you know, people are bringing their own. But one of the things we always do when we do our round of introductions is we have people answer the question, what are you drinking? And if you can encourage people and say, hey, you know, bring your own drink. It doesn't have to be alcoholic, but it certainly can be. And then, uh, you know, try to make it a drink that really reflects your personality that tells us something about who you are. So now in our in our networking group, we have people who show up and they have a particular wine that's from a vineyard, They can, or there's a kind of a weird craft beer, or that's like a, an ale, or it's a, like an apple cider, or some people say, I made this mixed drink, it's got all, you know. So in other words, it, it, it creates a conversation topic. Not only does it, you know, get everyone a little looser because they've got some alcohol in their system, but also it's something that creates a conversation topic. It gets people talking about themselves. If you kind of create that upfront frame that says, hey, bring a drink. And you know what? If you don't drink, so fine, bring yourself a fruit smoothie and tell us what you put in it or whatever. Everyone drinks something, whether alcohol or nothing else. Can't live if you don't drink something. Um, if you want to bring water, then tell us about the type of water you like, whatever. But again, it's something that you can do to, um, to uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, create – First of all, encourage more people to participate, make sure they feel comfortable and actually make them feel like it's something that, you know, is more than just a drink, but something that reflects themselves. And that's the advantage of not serving. You know, when you have a regular party and you're the one who's actually supplying the beverages, then it's less of an opportunity for those beverages to reflect a person's personality. So there's an upside you get by the fact that it's B-Y-O-B. -E. Okay, next, music. What's a party without music, right? So I'm going to play a little music right now. Hopefully that's planned. And uh, now I'm going to stop it because I don't have the rights to actually play any songs. But let's just talk about that for a second. So, uh, uh, you know, it's easy to play music through conferencing platforms. And there's multiple ways to do it. Uh, you're probably familiar with the fact that you can share your screen on Zoom or other platforms. But there's a little, if you're using Zoom, there's a little checkbox you can check that says, also share my computer audio. And if you do that, then you can also share any music that you're playing on your computer. And so... What we do is we use, you know, Spotify or Apple Music or Pandora or one of those services. And then we're able to just, you know, play music on the Zoom. And that's great. When people show up to your party, you know, you want uh, you want music. You want, them to, you want them to show up and that you want them to see a whole bunch of people waving their pom-poms, wearing their funny party hats and listening to music. Hopefully you can hear me while I'm playing that music. And uh, all of a sudden, you've created a party atmosphere. And then they see people holding up their beers. And they're like, holy cow, I've shown up to a virtual party. So a lot of it is in this kind of setup. And by the way, first impressions are huge, right? You don't want to get people on and then be like, okay, everyone, time to start the party. You want to make sure that the moment people show up, it's party time. And you know what's good is if you're planning this party with a few other people, make sure you guys are on a little early. So you're starting the party. So when the first sort of uh, guest who's not really a part of it, you know, not part of the planning shows up, uh, like they're already seeing people who are engaged in party type activities. And again, that's going to telegraph to them that this is not a normal meeting. This really is a party. And then they're going to get into party activities. And then the more people who show up, it's like any party, right? I mean, when you walk in, it's a lot, what's the vibe in the room? So you need to create that vibe in the room from the very beginning. Now, I just want to mention that um, there are a few other ways to play music over Zoom. Uh, some people find that playing the music through sharing their screen is not optimal on Zoom. And one reason is that they keep changing the features, but there have been times when you really couldn't share music without your screen. I think they may have changed that now. 
Sometimes it's also difficult to control the volume of the music. I found when I use that feature of Zoom, and of course your mileage may vary in terms of if you're using a different conferencing platform like Teams or GoToMeeting. But I also wanna mention that there are these devices. Um, I'm using right now a, a Rodecaster Pro, which is a sound mixing board, uh, which is used for podcasting and such, which I do a lot of. So that uh, makes it particularly easy um, I'll actually just tell you what I have. So I was just playing that music off my phone. This is my Android phone. This is Spotify running on my Android phone. And it's connected by Bluetooth to the mixer. And then I have, you know, a microphone here that I'm speaking into. And the mixer is combining together these things, which then goes into my computer and out to you. Now, that's my setup. But this is a little bit more of a professional setup because I do a lot of workshops and obviously live casting and podcasting and other things. Um, and the Mixing board that I'm using, again, is a very, very popular board used by a lot of podcasters. It's called a Roadcaster, Roadcaster Pro. Yeah, Roadcaster Pro, which you can find if you Google it or look on Amazon. It's very common. Um, it costs, I think, like 500 bucks, maybe 600 bucks, something like that. So it's not like a crazy expensive item, but you may not need that. Because if all you want to do is play music, there's another way, which is you can actually play it through your audio connection. Now, if you just call in on your phone and you play music on Spotify, it's not going to work. But what you can do is get a box like this. This is a box from a company called Al Powell. I'm sure that's some Chinese company. And this is a called the Sound Card version eight. You can find this on Amazon. That's where I got it. And uh, there are other competing products that are more or less doing the same thing. This is a little tiny mixer. And I think I paid about $60 for this. And what this does is it lets you, if you're connecting, if you're talking on your headset, right? Like, for example, if you're using your, uh, you know, Apple, you know, uh, your, your, your regular like, you know, earbuds. Um, you can uh, bring those in. You'll see in the back, if you can see this, there's inputs. And so you can basically input your headphone and you can input your, uh, your, your, uh, your phone, right? Or your iPad or whatever, some device that you use to play music. Some of these also allow a Bluetooth connection. I don't think this one does, but there are others that do. And then you can mix them together, right? You can control the volume of each source. And then the music is part of your audio signal instead of needing to be shared. So now you don't have to think about sharing your screen or sharing your audio because let me just think like the voice signal that goes to Zoom is essentially now got music too. So you can just combine that into your voice. And I think these are good items to have. They're handy anytime you want to. And I encourage you guys to use music, not just for parties. It's a good way to start a staff meeting. You know, just put a little music on, you know, for even if it's for 30 seconds, gets people in a great state of mind. This has all kinds of other funny things on it like giggle, applause, laughter, like some sound effects, right? Uh, they're a little cheesy, but you know, again, sometimes being a little cheesy is a good way to get a party going, you know? So this is another thing you have in here. Uh, there's a button called elimination. I won't even speculate as to what kind of sound that might make. I actually know. Um, you may or may not want to use that depending on the culture of your company. In any case, uh, okay, so that's music. And I just wanted to make sure I didn't just say play some music, but gave you some practical ways because I know I get a lot of questions. Uh, we have uh, a training course we do called Impactful Online Meetings that helps people learn some of these techniques, not so much for parties, but for workshops. And one of the most common questions I get actually is, how do I play music in my Zoom meeting? So I want you to know it's it's not that hard, And but sometimes investing in 50 or 60 or whatever dollars of a little bit of external equipment can actually make it easier. Okay, icebreakers. So uh, we actually have a, um, a deck full of icebreakers. Let me just explain what an icebreaker is. And then I want to offer something that you can get, which is uh, the, um, so an icebreaker is just a little game where you ask questions of some sort or engage with a group of people and give them an opportunity to share. So here's one very simple example. One very simple example is uh, to ask people to look around the room that they're in and find something that is meaningful to them and share with the rest of the group what's meaningful about it. So I'll give you an example. I have this in my office. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, this is, um, well, it's a rubber band ball. <laughs> and when my daughter Jessica was about seven years old, she got in her head, she wanted to make this rubber band ball. And she spent about two weeks, maybe even more, just working, working, working on building this rubber band ball till it got to be as big as it could possibly get. It was like a passion project of hers, building this rubber band ball. And uh, it, she worked on it, worked on it, worked on it. And eventually she got to the point where the rubber band she had could no longer go around it without breaking. And then she knew she was done. And then when she was all done, she gave it to me. She gave it to me as a gift. Um, now I wasn't really, it wasn't really on my Amazon wish list, a rubber band ball, but you know how it is when your kid gives you something that they spend a lot of time making. So my daughter is now applying for college. She is um, 17. So this is quite a while ago. This is a more than decade old rubber band ball. And you can see some of the rubber bands have given out. 
But um, this is a meaningful item to me. So there, I've just shared. And now you can go around them. And it's good, by the way, for you to go first to just kind of ex- set the example and then let other people go. Now, now that's just one example of an icebreaker. And hopefully you can imagine how everyone's got a drink in their hand, they got a party hat, and they're grabbing something and they're sharing something about themselves. One of the benefits of uh, uh, parties is people get to know each other better. And how do they get to know each other? They learn something about them that they don't learn in the office. You know, we're not usually talking about something like that in the office, especially to people who we don't consider to be like close office friends. So we actually have a deck, a free deck of icebreakers. I think you can get it at impactfulonlinemeetings.com slash icebreakers, if I'm not mistaken. And it contains about 10 or 12. And actually, we have a training course where we have a deck that we give out like 50 or 60 different icebreakers, just different things. Another example is two truths and a lie. Uh, you know, most of you probably know the game two truths and a lie. You go around and, each, and you have someone say you have one person be it. And they have to say two truths and a lie about themselves. And then everyone has to guess which one is the lie. I'll give you an example. Um, I um, grew up in Chicago. Uh, I was once on the game show uh, Win, Lose, or Draw with Burt Convy in the 80s. And uh, I am a certified scuba diver. So now you have to decide which of those is true, which is true and which is a lie. So that would be an example. You know, I just realized I screwed up. I told you three things that were all true. So <laughs> my bad. I forgot to lie. See, that shows you what an honest person is. Well, anyway, you get the general idea, and then the audience has to try to guess. And again, you can see how this is a game which is fun. People are shouting, they're laughing, and uh, you're learning a little bit more about somebody. And that's a game that's good to play with 10, 12, 15 people. When you get to a certain size, it's a little too many people to have 20, 30, 40 people all on Zoom guessing one person. And then that's a time when you might want to break it up. Um, So let's just talk a little bit about socializing. One of the things that we like to do with larger parties is to break uh, up into breakout rooms in Zoom or whatever conferencing platform you're using. So, for example, um, uh, well, you know, at a, at a real party, you discover people break into clusters, right? If you have 40 people at a party, they don't stand in a big circle of 40 people and have one conversation. People break off into three people, five people, seven people over here, and that's normal. And you want to simulate something like that in an online party. So uh, the best way is to use breakout rooms. And so uh, one of the things we've done, we've done it actually a couple different ways. Let me offer you a couple of approaches. One is to randomly put people into breakout rooms and say, we're going to give you seven minutes or something like that. And then we're going to randomly change it around again. In Zoom, for example, there's like a random button. You can literally send everyone to a random breakout room group, and then send them to another random breakout room. If for any reason you don't know what I mean by a breakout room, it just means that instead of everyone being in one Zoom, it feels like like let's say you have 40 people on a Zoom call, you create four little separate, it's almost like four little separate sub Zoom calls and you send 10 people to each one. And now when you look, you only see the other people that are in your breakout room. You can only talk to the other people in your breakout room, which means you can have four different parallel conversations going on. And then at a certain point, the person who's running, it can bring everyone back together again. So it's different from just having four completely different Zooms because then you wouldn't be able to bring everyone together and then separate everyone back out, which is good to do in a party. And so- uh, that's, uh, you know, one thing is to just send people to random different rooms. Another approach that we've taken and zoom just added a really cool feature about a month or two ago where it's actually possible for participants to move themselves from one room to another room. If you, if you give them permission, you know, and again, I don't know exactly whether this is true for every conferencing platform. Uh, if you've ever gone to the settings section of zoom, it's like, there's like 5,000 different settings for zoom, which is great it gives you a lot of power but of course it can be like a little overwhelming if you're looking for one thing but bottom line is there is a place where you can go and allow people to move themselves from room to room just like in a real party you might wander around and talk to one group of people and then talk to another group so one thing we've also done is create themes around each each room so we say okay this is the sports talk room you know and this is the politics talk room or maybe you don't want any politics but it's just an example this is a room where we're going to be talking about our, our weekend plans or our vacation plans or whatever. You can create some themes. They can be very narrow or they can be more general. And uh, then people can kind of decide which, which group they want to join. Or you could just call it, give them crazy names. You know, uh, this is group, you know, this is the whatever. You just give them a fun name and doesn't not, cl- not clear what the group is. But all of a sudden people can wander around, go from room to room and just kind of see what people are talking about. Just like you would in a real party. So. Those are some techniques for using breakout rooms to help people socialize. And it's good to let people know if it's a Zoom party, hey, guys, we're going to do a half hour socializing, and then we're going to come back together because we have some fun games we're going to play together as a group, that sort of thing. So this is for more unstructured. Remember how I said you're going to want unstructured portions and you're going to want structured portions.
So it might sound like I've applied some structure because I've defined different rooms, but other than that, people can do whatever they want, right? Once people show up to the room, it's just like, they're just chatting, right? Um, but the next thing, and this is my last one that I'm gonna talk about, is structured games. So now I, I kind of did describe when I described things like two truths and a lie, that's a kind of a, I don't know if it's a game exactly, whatever you wanna call it, I call it an icebreaker. But at our holiday party, for example, we did several structured games. So what do I mean by a structured game? Well, something like Pictionary, right? And again, this can be something that's good to do in uh, breakout groups um, because, you know, you don't, again, 40 people don't all play Pictionary together. And so if you've never played Pictionary uh, or win, lose, or draw or something like that, essentially uh, one person gets up. It's kind of like charades, but with drawing. And what's nice is on uh, you, you have drawing tools um, built into most drawing, most conferencing platforms. So essentially what you do is you give the person who's going to be it uh, something that they have to communicate to the rest of the group. Uh, for example, you know, I don't know, like it could be a famous person, the Empire State Building, you know, and then without speaking, they have to draw the Empire State Building. Or it could be something a little harder, like, you know, I don't know, um, um, the first president of the United States. Now, how are you going to draw that? Well, you have to figure out how to do it, right? And then everyone's shouting and guesses, and that's the fun of it. Um, so if you look, this is a slide of instructions that we used for our holiday party. And you see that we actually used a website called uh, thegamegal.com slash word generator. And the reason we did that is because, you know, of course, we don't want everyone to see what the word is because that's the sort of whole point of the game. Only the person who's drawing knows that. So we let that person go. It clicks. It gives you like a random topic. And then that, that's their assignment. And then they have to draw that. So that's we use that tool. There are many ways you could do it. You could also just send a private chat. The person who's moderating could simply use the private chat and private chat the person who's drawing and say, OK, your assignment is to do this. You know, of course, in that case, you want to have some pre-created or you can even just buy the game Pictionary, go on Amazon and buy the game, the board game Pictionary. It comes with all these little cards like playing cards and on them are different things people can draw. So you can just buy one copy and then you're not going to actually use the rest of the game, but you'll pick a card and then say, OK, I see what the card is. I'm going to private chat the person who's drawing and let them know. Of course, then that person can't guess because they know what it is. And then uh, you usually use a timer um, and, uh, you know, tell the person how much time they have left and if they get it right or not. And usually what we do is we'll do Pictionary typically divide into two teams. So we might, if, if it was a small party, let's say it was a party of only, you know, 15 people, we might just break into two teams. If it was a party of 50 people, we might have four breakout rooms. And in each breakout room, we have 10 to 12 people. And then of those 10 to 12 people, we break them onto two teams um, so that they're playing in parallel. And maybe we say the winners switch or like the teams can switch. So after the first round, team A from breakout room A goes to breakout room B. So they're playing different teams. Things like that. There are a lot of ways, a lot of variations you can do on this. But Pictionary is a game that works very well because people can draw on their screen. They can draw with their mouse. Or, of course, if they want to use their phone, you know, you can also connect to Zoom via an iPhone or a tablet. And then you can draw with your finger on the screen, which is sometimes a little easier than drawing uh, with a mouse. So those are some great ways to do Pictionary. Another great game to play is rock, paper, scissors. And this is the instruction slide that we used for our holiday party. Um, again, in this case, what we did was we send people to breakouts. Of course, in rock, paper, scissors, only two people play against each other at a time. So we would have a breakout of around eight people. And then within that eight people, we would take turns. So, and then we would, the goal in our case was, as you see, uh, to get to the winner of your breakout. So what we did was we had, uh, you know, we had eight people. So that's four rounds of two. And then you have four winners and then you have two sub final rounds or whatever else. And then you have the final round and then you have the winner of that breakout. And then if you have four breakouts, let's say you have 32 people at your party, then you bring everyone back together in one main Zoom room and you say, OK, everyone cheer for these four people that each won their own breakout. And then everyone's going to watch. It won't take very long, you know, three minutes for the final few rounds to see who's the ultimate winner of the party. And then you might have a prize. You might give them an Amazon gift certificate or something. You want to encourage everyone to be really actively involved. So, for example, what you want to tell people is that when they, if they don't win a given round, then they have to become the fan, the, the person who cheers behind the person who did win. And then if that person loses, then they get and they get kind of um, inherited by the winner. So, in other words, by the end, when you're down to the last couple people, everyone is on one of their sides. Everyone's a fan, and they're using their pom poms and they're cheering and they're screaming for whoever their fan is. Um, by the way, I wanted to show you one other thing, which is, um, uh, I, I don't think I have a game here. Um, oh, yeah, heads up. So so this is another game that you can play, and I'm going to try to wrap it up here because I know we're just about at time. Um, but hopefully this is all useful for you. Uh, this is a game that we can play. Um, heads up is a game you can play on your phone. And uh, essentially what you do is you go in heads up, and it gives you, it's similar to Pictionary, except in reverse. 
instead of the person who's it knowing what the thing is and drawing in for everybody else, you use an app, which uh, is described here on the slide. Um, you can use the heads up app from the app store if you want. And you put it on your forehead or, or and then um, you don't know what's on it. So you push the button on the app, but you don't look. And then everyone else can see through the camera what's on the. So, for example, mine might say Denzel Washington, but I don't know that. So I'm holding my phone up on my forehead like this. And it says Denzel Washington. And by the way, if I'm it, then I have to turn off my screen so I can't see my own. Obviously, you can't be seeing yourself in Zoom like you normally can do, because, of course, then you then you then you. Uh, uh, so I have to be like, close it or close the gallery or whatever else and on the honor system. And then everyone else can see it says Denzel Washington. And then everyone else in the group has to give me clues as to what this thing on my forehead says. Um, another good tool that I just want to offer is using these kinds of slates. Sometimes we'll send in a, in a, uh, a party pack, we'll send a slate like this. It's just a, a dry, a dry erase surface. You can, again, you can buy this stuff on Amazon, super cheap in like a 10 pack and, um, and a couple of dry erase markers. So that similarly, we may have games, other games where people are going to write stuff on their boards and hold it up. So if you have a game, you could even do a trivia game with, you could do a trivia game with a hundred people, like almost like a Jeopardy kind of game and have everyone write their answer and then everyone can hold it up at the same time. So anyway, there's a million different types of games. I just wanted to give you a few examples. Um, charades is another one you can do. I'm not even going to go into it in detail. I really just wanted to give you a sense of some of the different types of games. So again, uh, you know, this is our list here, declare it a party. Send people a party box. You can send them some snacks, some costume items, some other fun things. Uh, make sure people are wear their party attire, including what you send them and what they wear themselves. Give them permission to let themselves loose and be fun. Encourage them to bring their own B, whatever that B is, wine, beer, mixed drinks, or just non-alcoholic. But even if it's non-alcoholic, encourage people to find something fun. You know, Make something, whatever, so that you can tell everybody else about it. Uh, play music. I gave you some tips on that. Use icebreakers. Find ways that people can socialize in appropriately sized groups. And breakout groups are great for that. And then you want to have some structured games. People, you know, people sometimes don't want to, especially people who are more introverted. They don't want to just have to socialize independently the whole time. They don't want to just do chit chat. It's good to give people some things that are like a structured game that they can do. So those are my eight uh, tips and techniques for how to have a party on Zoom. So hopefully that is going to enable you to have a great party. If you have any questions, post them in the chat. And if you have some cool parties, Send us some pictures. I'd love to see some cool pictures of your parties on Zoom. And by the way, they're fun to send out the next day. That's one last tip. Bonus tip, take screenshots during the party, right? That's the equivalent of taking photos at a party. Take screenshots of people doing crazy things, having fun. You can send them around the next day for, you know, just to remind people how awesome the party was. Or you can use it to blackmail your friends and coworkers. You know, just joking, of course. With that, hopefully this has been helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching and, and, and listening. And have great parties. See you next time.